Hey, what's up everybody? So if you aren't aware, I started a new series called Formulating for Beginners. So I have, I believe, three videos, maybe two videos in this series made already. I'll link both of those down below. I'll also link to the entire playlist that includes all the videos in this series. I did a series last year for beginners. You can go watch that if you want. It's good, it's decent, but I've learned a lot more since then and I wanted to redo the series. I also have a ton of other videos on my channel all about formulating, so if you have any questions, go through my channel. But for now, let's focus on beginners. Let's talk about today's topic, and today's topic is equipment and sanitation. So these are both really, really important when it comes to formulating, because formulating is a different thing of its own, and there's a lot of unique equipment and items that you need in order to formulate. So I have already my blog written out that goes along with this video. If you didn't know, I have a Patreon that has blogs that go right along with my videos. You can actually download the blogs, print them out, make your own little how to formulate skincare products booklets. I post exclusive videos. I do all kinds of stuff. Go check out my Patreon, link down below if you wanna know. But I'm gonna be referring to my blog I already have written out. So if I'm looking down a lot, that's why, just wanna let you guys know. As a beginner, I know it's really difficult to figure out what equipment to buy to formulate with. And it's also hard to figure out good sanitation practice. And like I said, that's what we'll be talking about today. So I'm gonna go through a list and I'll also have everything linked down in the description box of my video to everything I mentioned, okay? So one of the most important items that you need to purchase to start formulating is a digital scale. And you want one that weighs to 0.01 grams. So that means that's the least amount of weight it can detect. And mine weighs up to 500 grams. So it's really a scale meant for small amounts of weight. And that's the type of scale I recommend. I'll link to it down below. Love the scale. And I love seeing my viewers have the same scale. It makes me really happy. It's like, oh, you actually like listen to what I say. Like, freaking awesome. So check out that scale. I see so many other people with that scale, so it's obviously a, a good scale. Um, another thing you need are pipettes. They're those little plastic dropper things, so you can put like only a few drops of things into your formulas. You need these for accurate measurement, and it just makes things so much cleaner. When you pour things out of like things, sometimes it'll like spill all over the bottle, and that's not sanitary, that's not clean. If that does happen, if you pour something and it gets all over the side of the bottle, spray down a paper towel with some rubbing alcohol and wipe it down. Then you can put the cap back on. Good sanitary practice, which we'll talk more about later in this video. Another thing you need are beakers. So there is this awesome little set on Amazon. It includes beakers from 25 milliliters up to 1000 milliliters. I believe there's like five beakers in the set. I could be wrong. I'll have it linked down below so you can check it out. And it's really a good amount of different size beakers. And it also comes with three glass uh, mixers, which is another item I think is necessary to have. They're just glass stirring rods so you can stir up your formulas and stuff and they're really handy to have and I'll also link to another listing on Amazon where you can buy just more of those glass stirring rods because the set of beakers only comes with three stirring rods and you might want more than that so you don't have to like keep cleaning them so you can make a bunch of stuff all at once. I have tons of glass stirring rods and the more you have the better. Same goes with beakers. The more beakers you have, the less stressful because you can just sit there and keep making stuff and not worry about having to go do dishes, okay? And let me tell you, I didn't have very many beakers starting out. I bought like one set and then I just bought more sets as I got more into formulating and as time went on and as I saved up more money. So really just one set will get you by. You don't have to splurge and buy a bunch of them. But later on when you have more money, Highly recommend buying lots of beakers. The more you have, the better. Another thing that I love that I just got recently, but I don't know how I did life without them before. They're these little metal scoops and it's lab equipment. I looked up metal scoop lab equipment on Amazon and that's how I found them. And it just comes with like an assortment of different types of scoops, like big scoops, little scoops. And they're perfect for getting the product out of your bags. Like if you have some powdered DL panthenol or something, they're really helpful with powdered ingredients. You can just scoop it in there and plop into your formula. Something else you need that I can't really say you can get by without is a mixer and an immersion blender. So what I mean by mixer is like those little just mixers you use for baking if you know what I mean. 
And an immersion blender is something not many people have, at least I never did in my kitchen until I started formulating, but it's a high shear mixer. So it mixes like super, super fast and immersion blenders are used for emulsions. So lotions, conditioners, and mixers I typically use for body scrubs or body butters. And there's actually a immersion blender you can buy on Amazon, it's the one I have, and it comes with a mixer head and an immersion blender head. So you can buy just one item, but it comes with both tools. Highly recommend it, I'll have it linked down below. And then another thing I like to have is a little mini mixer. It's a high shear mixer. It's actually sold as a milk frother to make like lattes and stuff, which it does work for that. Um, <laughs> but make sure you're not using the same mini mixer for your milk as you are for your cosmetics. Make sure you buy two separate ones. But it's a high shear mixer, so it can be used to mix emulsions as well. And I like using that when I make small amounts of product. If I make too small of an amount of product, the immersion blender won't work because the blender won't hit the product. So if you're making like small amounts, like 50 grams or less, you're gonna want a mini mixer. Another thing that you need to have is a stove top or a burner. So I just use my stove top in my kitchen that has gotten me by, or you can just buy one of those single burners, plug it in, Maybe you have like a little lab, you do everything in. That way you don't have to go back and forth from the kitchen to your lab. You can use your stove top or go buy a single burner on Amazon. I'll have it linked down below. One last thing that you need to have if you're making skincare products are bottles and containers. Obviously you need to put your product in something. I don't recommend just using old containers from old products. That's not very good sanitary practice. Glass is perfect because glass doesn't like absorb stuff like plastic does. So you could actually boil your glass bottles after you're done with them to sanitize them, or you could put them in a sanitizing solution, which I'll talk more about sanitizing, I guess, now. Um, before we get into sanitizing, actually, I will link down below to my favorite places to buy bottles and containers from, so check that out if you need to know where to buy packaging for your cosmetics. One more thing I want to say before we get into sanitation is that you're going to be obviously accumulating a lot of equipment and ingredients for making skincare products. You won't have a bunch at first, but over time you'll end up with a ton. I like having a whole room dedicated to formulating. I call it my lab, but I don't feel comfortable calling it my lab because it doesn't have like that lab vibe, you know? It's just the spare bedroom in my house and it has carpet. I would love to replace the carpet with tile, but that would just be weird for reselling my house later in life. So I don't know if I want to do that or not. But anyways, um, you need to have like a good space dedicated to formulating. At least I find that to be best. You can use your kitchen if you want, but it's just, that's a little overwhelming for me. And I have a cat and my cat doesn't need to be part of my formulating stuff. You know, she's not allowed around it. So find a good area in your home that you think would be best for formulating. Uh, also, it's good to invest in like, some bookcases to store stuff, uh, cabinets, storage bins, baskets, anything to make organizing easier. First starting out, you don't really have to worry about this. Just have like one cabinet store everything in. That'll probably be enough space. That was all I had at first. Now I have like five bookcases and just tons of stuff everywhere, okay? So good organization will make you more inspired to formulate more. Trust me, I go through and like organize my room probably like once every couple months, maybe even just once a month. I really go through and reorganize things all the time because it inspires me to want to formulate more. I even love just rearranging things. That really inspires me too. But I'm a clean freak, so maybe it's just me. All right, so now let's talk about sanitation practice how to keep things clean. It's really important to keep a clean environment because our products are breeding grounds for microbes, bacteria. They all just wanna grow mold. Not only are your preservatives working to eliminate microbes from growing in your product, you also want to keep your environment where you're making things as clean as possible to further prevent contamination. So what I like to do, I know this is obvious, but the first thing I do is wash my hands. And I put on a hairnet. I put on my hairnet before I wash my hands. Okay, I always lint roll all my clothing before I go in as well, so like random hairs from my clothing won't like fly off, you know, in my lab and then just show up later in a product or something. So I like to lint roll everything as well. I have a lint roller and a hairnet hanging up on the outside of my lab. So then I go in there and that's all I do if I'm just like hanging out in my lab doing other things, like if I'm not formulating. But then when I go to actually formulate, you want to put on safety goggles 
Because when you're working with a bunch of liquids, you know liquids like to splash up sometimes. And you do not want an ingredient getting into your eye. Ingredients at 100% might burn. Not all of them are going to, but it might. You just don't want to get things in your eye, okay? It's not fun. Have you ever got shampoo in your eye? Yeah, it's not fun. So <laughs> let's not be getting things in your eyes. So wear some safety goggles. And another thing that's always good to wear, I guess it's not necessary, is some kind of like lab coat or an apron. Have you ever got oil on your clothing? It's so hard to get out. So just to protect your clothing, wear an apron or a lab coat or something. Make your life so much easier. Another thing I like to wear is a cloth mask, okay? And um, I'll link all this stuff down in the description box. But I like to wear a mask because I don't like the idea of breathing on the products I'm making. I know I'm like on top of the product, so I'm not like not directly like breathing into it. But just the idea of somebody breathing into a product, I don't know, it kind of weirds me out. And since I do sell product, I just want to make sure I'm not like breathing into everybody's stuff. So I wear a mask. If I'm making something for myself, you know, for YouTube, I don't really worry about the mask. It's not that big of a deal. But if I'm making something for somebody else, I put on that mask. It just freaks me out. Another thing that I use from time to time is a respirator. And this is like a mask that really filters out things you don't want to breathe in, okay? A respirator is more expensive than just like a cloth mask. I'll link to one down below. It's not the same one I have, but it'll work. It's actually better than the one I have because it's not as bulky. And this will protect you from powdered ingredients that can get airborne easily that you don't want to breathe in. So it's really important to have if you're working with a lot of powdered substances like powdered surfactants, even mica powders you don't want to breathe in. So that's just good to have on hand if you're working with powdered ingredients. So once I have on all my stuff, and I'm ready to formulate, I will put on my gloves. Gloves are very important. Anytime you're formulating, you wanna make sure you have on some gloves. And I have like a stainless steel table. If you ever worked at a restaurant in the kitchen, you know how they have those stainless steel tables. It's like that. I'll link to it down below actually. And uh, that's where I work. So I begin by spraying down my surface with rubbing alcohol and I wipe it down with paper towels. So having rubbing alcohol on hand is a really, really good idea. You can use it all the time. I freaking use rubbing alcohol so much. You want the 70% alcohol. I've done research and the 70% rubbing alcohol seems to have the best sanitation uh, properties. I'm not really sure why. It's something about having water in it as well with the rubbing alcohol that makes it stronger than like the 90% rubbing alcohol. I don't know, Google it. You can do your own research on it. Make your own choice on that. But that, I just use a 70% rubbing alcohol. So before you go to actually formulate, you wanna make sure all your equipment is sanitized. I sanitize my equipment ahead of time and I actually have a whole video about how I sanitize my equipment. I have these little sanitizing tablets. I put them in distilled water and then I put my equipment in the sanitizing solution for a minute and then I let them air dry on a drying rack. And it's really important to let your equipment air dry instead of wiping them down with paper towels or towels because paper towels and towels can leave little microfibers in your equipment, like in your beakers or anything, and those fibers might show up in your product at some point. So you really just wanna let them air dry. And after they air dry, I store them in gallon sized baggies and I either put them on a shelf or in a big tote and store them away. And I do this with the equipment I use, being my beakers, my scoops, my immersion blenders, and I do it with my containers, bottles, all that stuff as well. So then when I go to formulate, I have everything already cleaned and sanitized so I can just grab what I need and start formulating. So that's why it's always a good idea to have a bunch of beakers. <laughs> so you can always have some sanitized, some being used, and some probably dirty that you need to clean. And that's basically it for our sanitation and equipment. I might have missed something. If I did, I'll put it in the comments down below and I'll pin my comment so you guys can see it. So check the comments just in case. Also check the description box for links to everything. I told you I'd forget something. You need a temperature gun. I don't know how I forgot this. I use this almost every time I formulate. Get one of these, link down below. One more thing I wanna mention is definitely go check out my video on how I sanitize my equipment cause that kinda goes right along with this video that I made. But I, that video is already good. I don't need to remake that. So if you wanna learn how to sanitize your actual equipment, go watch that video. I'll have it linked down below. Another thing you could do instead of buying sanitizing tablets is use 10% bleach with 90% distilled water. You can use that instead of a sanitizing solution. I personally hate working with bleach. I have worked with bleach at multiple jobs and two times. I'm not kidding, twice. I have spilt bleach 
all over me and ruin my clothing. I've worked with bleach, I think at every single job I've ever had, and I don't like it. I don't know, maybe I'm just clumsy and I spill it all over myself, but I don't like working with bleach because I always end up bleaching things I don't want to bleach. So that's why I like using sanitizing solution instead of bleach. But you're more than welcome to just go to the store and buy some bleach instead of the sanitizing tablets. But I really love these sanitizing tablets because you just it's just a little jar and you have so many tablets in there and bleach is just so big and takes up so much space and stinks. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you have a better understanding of sanitation and the equipment you're going to need when formulating. And yeah, so let's move on to the Patreon shoutouts. So first up we have Stardust Bath and Body over on Instagram, Nature's Farm Girl at naturesfarmgirl.com. Kennedy's Essentials at kennedysessentials.net, Let's Blend at letsblend.bigcartel.com, Creative with Love at creativewithlove.me, Wallflower Wildflower at wallflowerwildflower.com, Heartfelt Beauty on YouTube if you want some more formulating videos, Sugared underscore Pineapple over on Instagram, KAJ Bath and Body over on Etsy, Blue Mint Soaps at bluemintsoaps.com, Say Tara here on YouTube at Salt Air Label over on Instagram. Lenise Beauty at lenisebeauty.com. R Drew Naturals at rdrewnaturals.com. Shark City at sharkcitynaturals.com. And sharkcitycbd.com. Also, we got Ohana Lay at ohanalay.com. And one more thing, if you guys didn't know, I do sell products myself over on Etsy. I'll have my Etsy shop linked down below along with all of my lovely patrons. So let me know if you have any other questions over this topic. Remember, if there's something I'm missing, something I forgot, I'll put it down in the comments and I'll pin my comments so you guys can see it. So hope you guys are enjoying this series for beginners and let me know if you have any suggestions on videos you guys would like to see in this series. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys next time. Later. I'm stuck in the motions. I've been consumed by the wrath of time like I'm from unshattered. Because I've had a vision